Kentucky, he's not there. That's just what Bill has done with his men. And we see them in action in the story, Battle of the Lumberjacks. Let's pay a visit to our old friend, Frenchy DuSalle. There's bad blood running between Frenchy's men and the lumberjacks of a rival logging outfit that's cutting timber about 20 miles from Frenchy's logging operation. Frenchy's decided that it's about time he let the big boss in on it. Boss, uh, I am fuck with you. Okay, Frenchy, sit down, let's hear it. <coughs> Mr. King, uh, you remember uh, some time ago, Frenchy here asked about having chapel service for the lumberjacks. You told Frenchy that you were thinking about it. That is, four weeks ago, you say that. Frenchy, if they get you are time enough to think, what is the answer? The answer? The answer is no. Mm, that is what Frenchy sure you say. Why? Listen, you big bruiser. Just because religion changed you from a fighting maniac and made a gentleman out of you, no reason to try and force it down the other men's throat. Well, yeah, well, but uh, when this French is saying he's going to show me down the men's throat, nobody shall be lost down my throat, Mr. King. I took him as savior because I think I should. The men, they need something besides hard work. They cannot face their souls on fine logs, Mr. King. Frenchy, we went all through this the last time we talked about it. All I'm worried about is cutting logs. It should be the only thing that concerns you, too. Oui, 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 yes, it is. You see that we are two weeks ahead of schedule, and Frenchy's yard, they cut more logs than any other two of we put together. Yes, I know, Frenchy. I don't know how you do it, but you do. And you don't lose any men, either. Oh, uh oh. -huh. I give the man big fat pay and big pat on the bar. I lead my men, Mr. King. I do not drive them. My job she is to give them more than they get from another ball. <laughs> that way I keep them up there. Uh, giving them religion won't keep them happy? I believe it would. Being a Christian makes Francie do some of no, I have song in my heart. Frenchy, it's no use. I won't have my lumber camp turned into a Sunday school. Okay, Mr. King, you are the boss. But uh, now I have some bad news to tell you. You're not quitting. <laughs> well, that would be bad news, boss. <laughs> no, that would be good news. That's a matter of opinion, Frenchy. To me, it would be bad news. Well, let's get to the point. What's the bad news? There is bad blood running between my boys on the yachts from Ben Larson's town. Hmm. That doesn't surprise me too much, Frenchy. How bad are the feelings? Mm, pretty bad, boss. A couple of Frenchy's boys already have fight with some of Ben's boys. Frenchy afraid that there'll be big fight in town tonight. Uh-oh, I don't like that. What seems to be sparking them to fight? Jealousy and hate, Mr. King. My boys shoot off their mouths about being extra good jocks, and Ben's boys do not like it. I tell my boys to keep quiet, but uh, Ben's boys will not let them. My boys, they act fine. Then Ben's jocks eggs them all. Well, get in town and see that nothing happens. Okay, boss, but uh, that is like trying to keep the sun from coming up in the morning. <laughs> Little does Mr. King realize how right Frenchy is. Right now, there are a hundred lumberjacks in Lumbertown. Most of them are in the two eating houses. Frenchy's men favor one restaurant and Ben's men the other. Frenchy's men are behaving themselves, but Ben's men are in a nasty mood. They're looking for trouble as a dozen of them walk into the restaurant where Frenchy's men are eating. One of Frenchy's men looks up. Hey, Blackie, look who's walking in. Yeah, and Ben ain't with him. Where's Frenchy Nils? Uh, he's back at camp. He and the boss have some business to take care of. Good. Then Frenchy won't be in town tonight. If Lefty starts something, we know that Ben ain't in town either. Uh, just let him say one word the wrong way. We'll shut their mouths. Yeah. Come on, boys. Let's find out what these knuckleheads are doing in our eating joint. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, fellas. Here come the good boys. Frenchie says they've got to behave themselves like Sunday school children. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw them out, boys. fight in the restaurant and now on Main Street of Lumbertown. The men battle savagely with their brute strength and all of the pent-up fury unleashes itself from within their souls. Frenchie arrives at one end of Main Street and gasps as he quickly sizes up the situation and realizes he's arrived too late. Then Frenchie sees Ben Larson across the street and yells to him. Ben Larson! Am I glad to see you? We've got to stop that fight, or neither one of us will have a good man left to work on Monday morning. You should have thought of that before. Come on, Frenchie, go sell these angry. So am I. Let's break it up. We'll stop it. We'll start from this time. Frenchie, pick up his men and put them to sleep. You pick up yours and do this time. Uh, let's go. the boss, Big Frenchy Dussau, wades into the mob of fighting men. Some of his boys see a six-foot-eight shadow from the corner of their eyes, and they stop fighting and get out of his way. At his side, Ben Larson stands six feet six, and he picks his own men out and sends them spinning on their way. In about ten minutes, the fight is over, and the men have headed back to camp. Don't look at me like that, Frenchy. It is a good thing Frenchy Chris Sean or a beach of his off. Why you let your men fight in town? Look at the damage. We will hear plenty about this, Ben Larson. Yeah, take it easy, Frenchy. I can't control my men like you can. I cannot control mine very well, it looks like. From now on, I come to town with them and make sure everybody behaves. <laughs> Come in, Frenchy. You want to see me, Mr. King? Yes. You and I are going to meet with the businessmen of Lumbertown. Ed Stone and Ben Larson will be there, too. Oh, Frenchy thinks the meeting about the damage is caused by the fight, am I right? You certainly are. The meeting will be at 9 in the morning at the town hall. We'll drive in together. Okay, boss. Frenchy, think our faces will be pretty red before we get through. That's a matter of opinion, Frenchy. As you know, your lumberjacks came into town last Saturday evening and literally wrecked the storefronts for about a block along Main Street. The restaurant in which the fight began had its interior pretty well demolished. Do you acknowledge these facts? Yes, we do, Mr. Hopkins. How much are the damages? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know, too. Several bids were made for the repair work, and the one we chose as most reasonable, <laughs> and yet would restore the buildings to their previous appearance, is $5,000. What are you trying to do? Remodel and repair at the same time? A lot of merchandise is ruined, too, mister. And the inside of the restaurant, you ought to see it. Okay, but don't try and tell us it's all gold-plated. Gentlemen, please, we'll make no headway arguing. You fellows representing the logging companies may have your own bids figured if you wish. Then we'll compare. I don't see any need for that. My company isn't responsible for its employees after working hours. We can't help what they do. If the tab was a thousand or even fifteen hundred dollars, I'd go along and pay half. But not five thousand dollars. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen, if that's your attitude, we haven't any choice but to take your companies to court. Get justice there. Also, we're declaring our town closed to your men, and we'll call the Rangers to back us. What do you say we clean up on Frenchy's camp, boys? 
Blackie and the rest of Frenchy's jacks are responsible for getting us thrown out of town. That shell lumber town, they can't throw us out. And at the same time, we'll clean up on Frenchy's men. Right. Well, let's go, boys. We'll show them who's who. Blackie, I just found out that Lefty and his jacks are coming over here to beat the tar out of us. They blame us for getting the town closed. Oh, they do. Uh, they're the ones to blame. They started the fight. Yeah, they're on their way here now. We better get the boys together and give them a royal welcome. Which way they coming, Nels? Through town. Good. We'll surprise them on Main Street. Archie! Archie, where are you? Archie! Run right here, boss. What is your boss there? Come on, we've got to get the car and head for town on the double. What is going on in town? Ed Stone just called me. He found out his men are heading for town on the way to clean up our boys. Our jacks found out, and now they're all in town trying to get the jump on each other. Huh. Well, Frenchy, big so rascals. They will learn not to sneak off on Frenchy to town when I am through with them. See us, Frenchy. They're breaking it up. It looks like they do no more damage, boss. I'm thankful for that. How are we going to stop this, Frenchy? I do not know. Frenchy, he tell you about having chapel service, but you not listen. What are you going to build a chapel out of? Iron bars? That's the only thing that will hold those maniacs. Maybe Frenchy, he got a good idea, Mr. King. What is it, Frenchy? Right now, almost anything would sound good. Frenchy, go see his old friend, Bill Jefferson. Good. In the meantime, you tell your men that the first guy to set foot outside this camp until this quiets down is fired. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, may I have it quiet, please? Thank you. It seems to me that it's time to call in the rangers. Now, although there wasn't any damage done today, the lumberjacks were close to an all-out brawl again. I don't think the logging bosses take this seriously. So, the only way to show them that we mean what we say is to call for help. Our own police force couldn't possibly handle those brutes. I'm asking Neil Parker and Floyd Hoskins to go with me this afternoon and we'll pay a call on the Rangers at their offices. And that's the whole story, Grey Wolf. Can you help us? Ah, uh, let's see. Lumber town and heart of government forests. Logging companies have special permission from rangers to cut timber. We even inspect and mark trees they can cut. I don't get your point, Grey Wolf. Let him finish, Neil. Uh, Grey Wolf's thinking of the legal angles here. Well, Henry Wright, I must be very careful that this come in our jurisdiction. Otherwise, have to get court order for us to step in. Will a court order be necessary, Grey Wolf? No. A lumber town on government land and logging companies operate by permission from Uncle Sam. But you've got to protect our property from the lumberjacks. They haven't any respect for private property at all. That's right. Why don't they have their battles out in the forest where they can't do any damage except to themselves? Can you force the logging companies to pay the damages already made, Grey Wolf? I don't know, man, but we can protect your property plenty quick. I have men in Lumbertown an hour. <laughs> Good morning, Frenchy. Glad you came. I want to have a word with you. Sure, boss. The rangers are in town. When's they come? About seven o'clock last night. How many? An even dozen. And they're heavily armed. They're mounted, carrying lead-weighted nightsticks and shotguns, as well as their standard equipment. Oh. Bill, he not play games with the lumber sharks. 
Frenchy, he is on his way now to talk with Bill. Now, perhaps instead of talking to Bill, it'll be better for you and some picked men to form a police force of our own. Zot, what good would that do, Mr. King? There'll be only more black eyes, bloody noses, and bruises. That's what I'm thinking about, Frenchy. If our boys tangle with the Rangers, there's going to be cracked heads and broken bones. That is why Frenchy think he should talk to Bill. Frenchy, no Bill will have some idea how to stop Lumberjops without bloodshed. Perhaps you're right. See what you can do. It's worth a try. Frenchy! Frenchy de Sal! <laughs> Andre, Grey Wolf! Frenchy not see you for a many weeks now. <laughs> not right, Frenchy. Good to see you, too. Uh, we plenty busy now with Bill and Stumpy away on business trip. Bill, are you not here? No, Frenchy. He'll be gone another week. Did you want to see him? Oh, Frenchy, well, to see Bill. So, Billy not here, so Frenchy see Gray Wolf, eh? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm glad to help do what I can. Uh, uh, what's your problem, Frenchy? You are there, Rangers, into Lumbertown, Gray Wolf? Uh, not right. And he isn't fooling either, Frenchy. The Rangers are there under strict orders to keep things under control. Grey Wolf has Bill's authority while Bill's away. That is why Frenchy come to talk. Maybe you fellows have idea how lumber jobs can be kept acting like gentlemen, eh? All uh, right. Do some thinking about problem, Frenchy. Maybe have idea. Ho, oh, oh. uh, ho. That is very good news to Frenchy here. What is your idea, Grey Wolf? Uh, before I tell idea, uh, you tell me your side of problem. Boy. I guess you've had your hands full trying to keep the lumberjacks from fracturing each other. You are right, Henry. Let Frenchy start from the beginning and tell you all that happened. Then, Grey Wolf, uh, you tell me your idea. And that whole idea, Frenchy, what you think about it. Oh, Frenchy, he thinks it is good. Uh, Henry, what do you think? I think it's a terrific idea, Grey Wolf. In fact, I don't see where anything else will do the trick. Ah, I'm glad you think it'll work. Frenchy, you call a meeting of logging bosses and businessmen for morning. Henry and I be there. Oh, oh. the more Frenchy think about this, the more he is sure you have solved problems. your attention, please. Frenchy, will you introduce Ranger Grey Wolf? Oh, oh, oh. Frenchy, glad to front. Gentlemen, Frenchy, like you to meet old friend. He is good ranger. He is also a good Christian. Grey Wolf has very good idea how to help us solve problem of how to keep lumberjacks under control and also keep them happy. Oh, Frenchy say enough. <coughs> Let Frenchy introduce Ranger Grey Wolf. Grey Wolf, the floor she is yours. Oh, uh, thank you, man. But uh, I'm not President of the United States. I just Forest Ranger. <laughs> oh, when when businessmen come to me for help, I send Rangers to guard property on Main Street. You sure did, Grey Wolf, and there hasn't been any trouble since. That's right. Uh, but shotguns, shotguns not answer to problem men. Lumberjacks have much to keep body and mind busy during working hours, but they're little or nothing to keep them busy after work. Uh, since there are much rivalry and strong feelings between two camps of lumberjacks, I think at time we put that feeling to constructive use. Well, that makes sense. I never thought of it that way. Well, I think... Why not have contest between two camps? Have prize for best lumberjacks. Hey, what kind of a contest do you have in mind, Grey Wolf? Oh, uh, why not have contest for champion lumberjack who can cut log in two fastest? Well, all right. Then, then have more for champion log roller. A saw team, tree topper, a team who can fell tree fastest, and many other contests. <laughs> I think your idea is terrific, Grey Wolf. I'm for starting it right away, but there's one question. Oh, 
Yes, Mr. King. Not all the men can be champions. So after the elimination contests, the majority of the men will lose out and only the top men remain occupied. Well, no. not true, Mr. King. And I plan to overcome that by making contest among groups of lumberjacks who have the same ability. Gentlemen, I think Grey Wolf's given us the only answer to our problem. I, for one, am willing to contribute heavily toward good prizes. And I think we should start this idea into operation at once. Look at the prizes our bosses and the businessmen are putting up, Frenchy. Oh, Ben Larson, they are still a double edged ox as one of the top prizes. Frenchy never have money to buy ox like that. Maybe no, Frenchy gets the uh, one in contest, huh? You weren't going to enter the contest, are you? <laughs> no, Ben Larson. Frenchy he is not. The Frenchy makes sure. <laughs> That's good. The other jacks wouldn't stand the ghost of a chance against you, and that includes me. <laughs> I think Frenchy pulled your leg, Ben. And look like contest about ready. All need now is printing of posters and rules. Then we sign up men and start elimination contests. I'll have those printed up by morning, Grey Wolf. Then they can be distributed. Until posters go up, uh, Frenchy pass the word and see how the men take it. And from the general reaction among ourselves, the idea should catch like wildfire. Blackie, what do you think about the contest? I think they're the best thing that's ever hit us. I'm going to all out to win something. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we'll show those fellas in Ben Larson's camp who the real champions are. I'm making a razor blade out of my axe, Ben. I'll show Frenchy's boys who can cut along the fastest. I understand all the boys think this contest business is a good thing. You understand right, boss, but we'd better win. I don't know why you're looking at the prizes, Lefty. You ain't gonna win any. Oh, no? They got a good look at them now, Blackie, because you'll never see them after the contest is over. How many lumberjacks sign up for contest, Frenchy? Oh, Jacques sign, Grey Wolf. Frenchy have hundred names. Ah, that's plenty good. Maybe they're no more trouble now. Lumberjacks too busy trying to be champion to fight. Tomorrow, big day, Frenchy. Oui, there'll be a lot of big days from now on. First one starts tomorrow morning. tie with Ben Larson's men. Good work, Nels. You hold the 
the record for tree topping. <laughs> Grey Wolf, Ed Stone, the businessmen, Ben Larson, Frenchie, and myself are having a meeting in the morning at my office. We'd like you to be there. Uh, I'll be there, Mr. King. Grey Wolf, the boys and I would like you to withdraw your rangers. We feel that everything's all right now, thanks to you. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Rangers leave after meeting. Uh, you open town to lumberjacks again? Yes, and we're doing it without any strings attached. We want to do our part. <laughs> Mr. Hopkins, Ed Stone and I talked things over with our superiors. We've agreed that we should do our part, especially since you and the rest of the businessmen have taken such a wholesome attitude. Here's a cashier's check for $5,000. We found out that your estimate of the damages our men did was correct. <laughs> Gentlemen, we're pleased that we've cemented our fine relationship that almost broke permanently. Thank you for the check. Well, Grey Wolf, it looks like you've sure cleaned house. You've driven out all the ill will and hard feelings that were hurting us and given us something wholesome in its place. Well, thank you, Ben. Uh, but we forgot one thing. What's that? What's you uh, forgot about food for Lumberjack's soul. He had plenty for his mind now, but he need more than that. He need God. Grey Wolf, at one time I would have disagreed with you as I did with Frenchy. But now I see things differently. Frenchy, you can start chapel services next Sunday if you wish, or any time for that matter. Oh, thanks, boss. Everybody is invited to call. Frenchy, not a preacher, but Frenchy loves the Lord. Grey Wolf, by the Lord's help, Frenchy gives the lumberjacks food for soul, too. We'll see you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bear! <laughs> Stumpy Jenkins, the ranger Bill's old sidekick, as I guess you all know. Just adding a little extra word of thanks for getting yourself in on the program today. Always glad to have you along. And I hope you invite your friends, too, for we sure got lots of adventures to tell you about. And we don't want you to miss any of them. So you make sure to be there by your radio every week. Don't lose out on our next story. <laughs>